It's unforgiving, uncompromising, and is devastating our planet. It's annihilating upwards of 7 million people a year. And it's changing 60 million lives forever. Of course, we're talking about climate change. What, you were thinking of a pandemic? Well, that line of thinking could help us solve this problem. Think about it. We saw how quickly the world reacted to a catastrophic pandemic. So what if we took a page from that book and applied it to climate change? Could we kick things into gear if we approached climate change this way? And what would life be like if we pulled it off? This is what if. And here's what would happen if we treated climate change like a pandemic. From AIDS to SARS, we've seen the world come together when facing medical crises. During times of epidemics and pandemics, the world works hard to create concrete solutions to problems. But even if we beat every single contagious contender that picks a fight, it means nothing if we don't have a planet to stand on. Recent pandemics have had us glued to the screen, watching the news about the confirmed cases and listening to the media discussing doomsday scenarios. But in 2019, broadcast networks in the US covered news on climate change less than 1% of the time. Could it be that a pandemic is seen as an imminent danger while climate change is viewed as a problem happening in the future? We've seen the world come together in an effort to kick viruses in their debilitating derrieres, but it's harder to imagine how bad a global temperature increase of one and a half degrees would be. So what if we were to use what we've learned fighting the virus and came together to fight climate change? It's time to get to work. We could start by pressuring the leaders of the world to admit that climate change affects everyone. This is a global problem. No more procrastinating. But then what? Well, they would need to invest in onshore wind power. This is one of the best ways to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. If by the year 2050 we increased the number of wind turbines, they'd go from generating 4.4% of the world's electricity to 26.9%. This would reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 147 gigatons. For perspective, 147 gigatons of carbon dioxide is 70 times more than all of the CO2 emitted by the US transport sector during 2018. And yes, we know it's a tall order. This transition would cost $1,659 billion. But get this, the result would be a lifetime savings of up to $10 trillion. Sounds like a win to us. And what if we kept this fight going and applied it to solar energy too? Solar power could make 25% of our electricity by the year 2050. And that would reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 119 gigatons. But what can you do at home? Well, if we choose to, we could waste 75% less food by the year 2050, which would reduce CO2 emissions by 18.8 .8 gigatons of greenhouse gases. This will also result in less deforestation, preventing another 73.6 gigatons of emissions. All this adds up to a whopping 438 gigatons of energy. And that's just the beginning we would expand our mass transit services, research and invest in geothermal energy and make going green really cool. We know it seems like a lot, but think about how fast we've acted to take on the recent pandemic. If we work together, we could really pull it off. We could start fighting climate change today. We have a lot of the knowledge and technology we need. And there's lots of solar, wind, water and geothermal energy available to us. We could do this. So while we're brainstorming, what else could we do for the Earth? Could we share it more equally? What if we set aside half of the planet for wildlife? Well, that's a story for another What If.